In Euclidean geometry, a cyclic quadrilateral or inscribed quadrilateral is a quadrilateral whose vertices all lie on a single circle. This circle is called the circumcircle or circumscribed circle, and the vertices are said to be concyclic. The center of the circle and its radius are called the circumcenter and the circumradius respectively. Other names for these quadrilaterals are concyclic quadrilateral and chordal quadrilateral. The latter since the sides of the quadrilateral are chords of the circumcircle. Usually the quadrilateral is assumed to be convex, but there are also cross-cyclic quadrilaterals. The formulas and properties given below are valid in the convex case. The word cyclic is from the ancient Greek kappa epsilon kappa lambda o micron sigma which means circle or wheel. All triangles have a circumcircle, but not all quadrilaterals do. An example of a quadrilateral that cannot be cyclic is a non-square rhombus. The section characterizations below states what necessary and sufficient conditions a quadrilateral must satisfy to have a circumcircle. Special cases. Any square, rectangle, isosceles, trapezoid, or antiparallelogram is cyclic. A kite is cyclic if and only if it has two right angles. A bicentric quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral that is also tangential and an x-bicentric quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral that is also x-tangential. Characterizations a convex quadrilateral is cyclic if and only if the four perpendicular bisectors to the sides are concurrent. This common point is the circumcenter. A convex quadrilateral ABCD is cyclic if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. That is the direct theorem was Proposition 22 in Book 3 of Euclid's Elements. Equivalently, a convex quadrilateral is cyclic if and only if each exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle. Another necessary and sufficient condition for a convex quadrilateral ABCD to be cyclic is that an angle between a side and a diagonal is equal to the angle between the opposite side and the other diagonal. That is, for example, Ptolemy's theorem expresses the product of the lengths of the two diagonals E and F of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the sum of the products of opposite sides. The converse is also true, that is, if this equation is satisfied in a convex quadrilateral, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. If two lines, one containing segment AC and the other containing segment BD, intersect at X, then the four points A, B, C, D are concyclic if and only if the intersection X may be internal or external to the circle. In the former case, the cyclic quadrilateral is ABCD, and in the latter case, the cyclic quadrilateral is ABDC. When the intersection is internal, the equality states that the products of the segment lengths into which x divides one diagonal equals that of the other diagonal. This is known as the intersecting chords theorem since the diagonals of the cyclic quadrilateral are chords of the circumcircle. Yet another characterization is that a convex quadrilateral ABCD is cyclic if and only if area. The area K of a cyclic quadrilateral with sides A, B, C, D is given by Brahma Gupta's formula where S, the semi-perimeter, is S equals one half. It is a corollary to Brett Schneider's formula since opposite angles are supplementary. If also D equals zero, the cyclic quadrilateral becomes a triangle and the formula is reduced to Heron's formula. The cyclic quadrilateral has maximal area among all quadrilaterals having the same sequence of side lengths. This is another corollary to Brett Schneider's formula. It can also be proved using calculus. Four unequal lengths, each less than the sum of the other three, are the sides of each of three non-congruent cyclic quadrilaterals, which by Brahmagupta's formula all have the same area. Specifically, for sides A, B, C, and D, side A could be opposite any of side B, side C, or side D. The area of a cyclic quadrilateral with successive sides A, B, C, D and angle B between sides A and B can be expressed as or where theta is either angle between the diagonals. 
Provided A is not a right angle, the area can also be expressed as another formula as where R is the radius of the circumcircle. As a direct consequence, where there is a quality if and only if the quadrilateral is a square. Diagonals in a cyclic quadrilateral with successive vertices A, B, C, D and sides are equals AB, B equals BC, C equals CD, and D equals DAR. The lengths of the diagonals P equals AC and Q equals BD can be expressed in terms of the sizes and so showing Ptolemy's theorem according to Ptolemy's second theorem, using the same notations as above. For the sum of the diagonals we have the inequality equality holds if and only if the diagonals have equal length, which can be proved using the AMGM inequality. Moreover, in any convex quadrilateral, the two diagonals together partition the quadrilateral into four triangles. In a cyclic quadrilateral, opposite pairs of these four triangles are similar to each other. If M and N are the midpoints of the diagonals AC and BD, then where and F are the intersection points of the extensions of opposite sides. If ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral where AC meets BD at E, then a set of sides that can form a cyclic quadrilateral can be arranged in any of three distinct sequences each of which can form a cyclic quadrilateral of the same area in the same circumcircle. Any two of these cyclic quadrilaterals have one diagonal length in common. Angle formulas for a cyclic quadrilateral with successive size A, B, C, D, semi-perimeter S, and angle A between size R and D. The trigonometric functions of A are given by the angle theta between the diagonals satisfies if the extensions of opposite sides are in C intersect at an angle phi. Then where S is the semi-perimeter, paramesh Ferrer's formula, a cyclic quadrilateral with successive size A, B, C. D and semi-perimeter S has the circumradius given by this was derived by the Indian mathematician Vatasari Parameshvara in the 15th century. Using Brahmagupta's formula, Parameshvara's formula can be restated as where K is the area of the cyclic quadrilateral, anticenter and collinearities. Four line segments, each perpendicular to one side of a cyclic quadrilateral and passing through the opposite side's midpoint, a concurrent. These line segments are called the multitudes, which is an abbreviation for midpoint altitude. Their common point is called the anticenter. It has the property of being the reflection of the circumcenter in the vertex centroid. Thus in a cyclic quadrilateral, the circumcenter, the vertex centroid, and the anticenter are collinear. If the diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral intersect at P, and the midpoints of the diagonals are M and N, then the anticenter of the quadrilateral is the orthocenter of triangle M and P. The vertex centroid is the midpoint of the line segment joining the midpoints of the diagonals. In a cyclic quadrilateral, the area centroid guard the vertex centroid GV and the intersection P of the diagonals are collinear. The distances between these points satisfy other properties. In a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD, the incenters in triangles ABC, BCD, CDA, and W the vertices of a rectangle. This is one of the theorems known as the Japanese theorem. The orthocenters of the same four triangles are the vertices of a quadrilateral congruent to ABCD, and the centroids in those four triangles are vertices of another cyclic quadrilateral. In a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD with circumcenter O, let P be the point where the diagonals AC and BD intersect. Then angle APB is the arithmetic mean of the angles AOB and COD. This is a direct consequence of the inscribed angle theorem and the exterior angle theorem. There are no cyclic quadrilaterals with rational area and with unequal rational sides in either arithmetic or geometric progression. If a cyclic quadrilateral has side lengths that form an arithmetic progression the quadrilateral is also x bicentric. If the opposite sides of a cyclic quadrilateral are extended to meet at E and F, then the internal angle bisectors of the angles at E and F are perpendicular. Brahmagupta quadrilaterals. 
A Brahmagupta quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral with integer sides, integer diagonals, and integer area. All Brahmagupta quadrilaterals with size A, B, C, D, diagonals E, F, area K, and circumradius R can be obtained by clearing denominators from the following expressions involving rational parameters T, U, and V. Properties of cyclic quadrilaterals that are also orthodiagonal. Circumradius an area for a cyclic quadrilateral that is also orthodiagonal. Suppose the intersection of the diagonals divides one diagonal into segments of lengths P1 and P2 and divides the other diagonal into segments of lengths Q1 and Q2. Then where D is the diameter of the circumcircle. This holds because the diagonals are perpendicular chords of a circle. These equations imply that the circumradius R can be expressed as or, in terms of the sides of the quadrilateral, as it also follows that thus, according to Euler's quadrilateral theorem, the circumradius can be expressed in terms of the diagonals P and Q, and the distance x between the midpoints of the diagonals is a formula for the area K of a cyclic orthodiagonal quadrilateral lateral in terms of the four sides is obtained directly when combining Ptolemy's theorem and the formula for the area of an orthodiagonal quadrilateral. The result is other properties in a cyclic orthodiagonal quadrilateral. The anticenter coincides with the point where the diagonals intersect. Brahmagupta's theorem states that for a cyclic quadrilateral that is also orthodiagonal, the perpendicular from any side through the point of intersection of the diagonals bisects the opposite side. If a cyclic quadrilateral is also orthodiagonal, the distance from the circumcenter to any side equals half the length of the opposite side. In a cyclic orthodiagonal quadrilateral, the distance between the midpoints of the diagonals equals the distance between the circumcenter and the point where the diagonals intersect.